Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to talk about navigation events in Angular. So, what are these navigation events? In Angular, when we navigate from one route to another route, there is a sequence of navigation events that are triggered by the Angular router. So, for example, currently I am in this home route. Okay, so I am in this home page. Now, when I navigate to about page, behind the scenes, a sequence of navigation events will be triggered. Now, these navigation events range from when the navigation starts to when the navigation ends with many other events in between. And we can also see what are the events triggered when we navigate from one route to another route. And to do that, we need to enable tracing. And to enable tracing, all we have to do is, here we are registering this router module and on this we are calling this for root method. So to enable tracing, what we can do is, to this for root method, we can pass a second argument, which is an object. And to this object, we can specify a property, which is enable tracing, and we can set it to true. Now, what this will do is, it will log all the navigation events, which will get triggered when navigating from one route to another route into the browser's developer console. Let's see that. Let's save all these changes. Let's go back to our web page. And here, let's open developer console. Okay, let's clear everything. Let's go to home page. So as you see, when I navigated from about page to home page, here there are some navigation events which has been logged here. And the first navigation event which gets fired is the navigation start event. And as the name suggests, it gets fired when the navigation starts. And just like navigation start, we also have navigation end, which gets fired when the navigation ends. And in between, we have several other navigation events. Okay, so for example, we have this routes recognized event, which gets fired when Angular recognizes a route. Then we have this guards check start event, which gets fired when Angular checks for the guard on a route. And just like guards check start, we also have guards check end. Then we also have activation start and activation end. So these are some of the events which gets fired when we navigate from one route to another route. Now as a developer, what we can do is we can subscribe to these events and when one of these events happens, we can run some logic. Let's understand this with an example. So let me close this developer console. So currently when we are navigating to this courses link, it is taking five seconds to get the data and once the data is available, then only it is displaying the view of that component, this courses component. Now, the end user does not know that the application is loading data behind the scenes and he might end up clicking on the link several times. Now, to avoid this, what we can do is we can display a loading image or a loading indicator while the data is loading behind the scenes. And when the data is completely available, then we can hide the loading indicator and display the actual data. Let's see how to do that. So let's go to VS Code. Now, the first question which will come to your mind is, where should we display the loading indicator? We have several components here. So in which component should we write the logic to display the loading indicator? Well, if I open app component.html, it is this component where we are using this router outlet. And the view of a router component gets rendered at this place, right? In the place of router outlet. So we can display the loading indicator inside this component, inside this app component in our example. For that, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a new div here. And let's set a class for this div. And let's call it maybe spinner. Okay, now for this class, let's write some CSS code to display a loading indicator. And in order to save some time, I have already written that CSS. So let me grab it from here and I will put this CSS in the description so that you can also use it. Okay, let's go to VS Code. Let's go to appcomponent.css and here let's add this CSS. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and here you can see it is displaying a loading image. Now 
you might not see the animation here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this color to something let's say black okay so maybe two 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 now let's save the changes let's go back to the web page so now you can see the animation now currently this spinner will be displayed always so what i'm going to do is inside the app component class so let me open the app component class here and here inside this class i'm going to add a new property and let's call this property display loading indicator okay and initially let's set it to false okay now let's use this property on this div so on this div element let's use ng if and to this ng if let's assign this property so initially it is false so this div will not be displayed so now if i go to the web page you will not see that loading indicator displayed here but we want to display this loading indicator when we navigate from one route to another route okay so as i mentioned we can write some logic when a navigation event happens and for that we need to subscribe to the navigation events so again let's go to app component class and the navigation events are available on router object so what i'm going to do is i'm going to inject an instance of router class so here let's create another private parameter let's call it router and it should be of type router and to use this router we also need to import it from angular slash router okay now this router has an event property so inside this ng on in it let's first access this router and on that router we have events property and if i hover over this events you will see that it is returning an observable okay so let's subscribe to that observable and we have learned that to this subscribe method we can pass a callback function which gets executed when a new value is emitted by the observable right and it receives that value so in this case we are going to receive an event a navigation event so let's call it maybe router event and it is going to be of type event okay and we need to import this event from angular slash router okay so remember that you need to import this event from angular slash router now inside this callback function we can check if this event or it is router event so if this router event is an instance of navigation start event okay so again to use this navigation start we need to import it from angular slash router so if this event which we are receiving here if it is an instance of navigation start in that case we want to set this display loading indicator property to true so here let's say this dot display loading indicator to true in that case this loading indicator will be displayed when we are setting this display indicator property to true now we again want to hide this loading indicator when the navigation ends so again let me copy this if statement from here and then let's check if the router event is an instance of navigation end so navigation end so when the navigation will end the navigation end event will be raised and when that event will be raised it will be assigned to this router event parameter so in that case this router event parameter will store an instance of navigation end event okay so in that case we want to set this display loading indicator property to false all right with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page so currently no loading indicator is being displayed now let's move to about page so the navigation start and end happened immediately that's why we didn't see the loading indicator in the same way if i move to contact page 
again the navigation start and end event happened immediately and that's why we didn't see the loading indicator now let's go to the courses page and now you will see the loading indicator so for five seconds we are not navigated to the courses page so for five seconds that loading indicator was displayed and as soon as we navigated to the courses page the navigation end event happened and in that case display loading indicator property got set to false and this div got removed from the web page from the dom okay let's see that once more so let me go to contact page since we have navigated here the navigation start and navigation end event happened immediately that's why we are not seeing the loading indicator but again if i go to courses page here it will take five seconds so for the five seconds it is displaying this loading indicator and once the data is available and when we are navigated to the courses page that loading indicator has been hidden it has been removed from the dom by the ngif structural directive so this is how you can run a logic if you want to when a navigation event happens now let's see one more thing let's go to this contact page and here let me fill something okay and now let's try to move to some other page so here it is asking us for confirmation now if i click on this cancel you will see that the loading indicator is being displayed here so why is that that's because here the navigation end event didn't happen because we cancelled the navigation okay and since the navigation end event didn't happen this code never got executed so this display loading indicator was not set to false it is still true and that's why we are still seeing this loading indicator okay now when we cancelled the navigation the navigation cancel event happened okay so when the navigation cancel event happens in that case also we want to set the display loading indicator property to false so let's also do that check here inside this if condition so let me copy this statement and here let's use this or operator and here let's also check for navigation cancel okay so now if i save the changes and again to use this navigation cancel we also need to import it from angular slash router okay so now let's go to the web page let me make this form dirty okay and let's try to navigate away so i click on this about link it is asking for the confirmation i click on cancel so now you will not see the loading indicator because now here we have cancelled the navigation so navigation cancel event has happened and when the navigation cancel event has happened this router event is storing an instance of navigation cancel okay so this condition will return true and in that case the display loading indicator will be set to false and it is a good practice to also check for the navigation error event okay so if there is some error in the navigation in that case also we would like to set this display loading indicator to false right so let's add that check as well so let me again copy this statement and let me use it here and here let's check for navigation error event okay so here we have this navigation error event with this let's save the changes let's check if the functionality is working properly or not so let me go to the courses link it is displaying the loading indicator so after five seconds it should just display the content of the courses page now let's go to contact page here let me make this form dirty and without saving it let's try to navigate away to another page so it is asking whether we really want to discard the changes let's click on cancel so no loading indicator image is being displayed let's again try to navigate away and this time let's click on ok so we are successfully navigated away and here since the navigation starts and ends so quickly that we are not able to see the loading indicator okay so this is what navigation events are and we learned how to run some logic when a navigation event happens this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day